Great morning, my dear friends. Kubesh, Anand, this side. So today we will be starting with lecture number two, international trade and capital flows. It means a trade, a trade of one country with another country that is named as trade flow. Capital from one country to another country that is named as capital flow. So in this reading, we are basically focus on international trade and capital flows. And we will be discussing today what are the pros and cons of international trade and capital flows. Basically, we will be focusing towards international trade flows. So, my dear friends, we have discussed in the last lecture, that is in lecture number one, what is the difference between gross domestic product and gross national product? What are the things which, which we include in GDP and we are basically towards you know domestic barriers in the, in the national boundaries and in GNP, what are the basic logic behind that? So we have discussed two, two, two points, GDP and GNP. So today, in today's lecture number two, I will be starting with learning outcome number B. That is learning outcome number B. And in this, I will be discussing one of the most basic logic question, intuitive question that if one country trades with another country, if India trades with China or China trades with USA, what are the benefits of international trade? And what are the cost of international trade? It means whether international trade should be allowed or not, whether it should be free or not, or whether there should be some restrictions. So we'll be evaluating those discussions in terms of benefits of international trade flows and cost of international trade flows. So my dear friends, please take out your registers. Lecture number two, no defeat is final until you stop trying. So, 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 lecture two, international trade and capital flows, learning outcome number B, describe benefits and cost of international trade. So the first point which I want to tell you that, you know, can you tell me, let's have a discussion and then we will be switching over to that, what is the basic logic behind that? Now, please tell me, you tell me that as per you, if, 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 you know, Now we have to discuss from the broad point of view, from broader point of view, not from India's point of view, not from a specific uh, country's point of view. We have to think it from the world economy point of view that this is one country, India, and if if the the trade, if if, if the goods are being exported from this country to this country, let this country be X country, and goods are exported to this as well as goods are imported to this. India. Now whether it will be beneficial for India or whether it will be beneficial for that country. So we have to discuss the positives, the benefits and the cost, you know. Now please do tell me that if we purchase the goods from China, you know, a, a very hot example, if China's goods are being easily available in India and they are available at a lower cost, and they are available at a good quality, if I add this also. Now the point is, whether Chinese goods should be allowed to be imported in India or whether Indian authorities should allow to import Chinese goods and whether Indian, whether Chinese authorities should allow the export from India to China. So whether this international trade will be, will be a better option or not. Now, before going to start with the discussion, I, I just can you, I just want to tell you a thumb rule. The thumb rule is that international trade on an average will always be a win-win position. At last, in long run, it will be a beneficial position for both the countries. This is a thumb rule. No doubt we will be starting with the discussion that why this happened, what are the benefits for that. Now, can you tell me what are the benefits for international trade? For example, if, 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 I, if I say in India, you know, we are making mainly focus on agriculture. Supposingly we are more concerned with agriculture, agricultural products or we are we are masters in softwares. If we are masters in softwares or we are masters in automobiles and let the other country be master in electronics, let the other country be master in other FMCG products. Now what will happen? That country will focus on FMCG, that country will focus on you know electronic products and will produce more and there will be economies of scale. Think it broader prospective. 
and if i see from india's point of view if they are masters in agriculture you know agriculture product they will be doing more better production in agriculture they will be having more automobile if, if automobile sector is good and similarly infosys wipro tcs all these companies they will be more focusing towards you know software and they will be exporting so the point is the point is ultimately there will be a economic welfare whenever there is a trade in between one country to another country because the wide variety of products will be available there will be there will be huge competition there will be economies of scale and and the resources which are limited resources you know water is limited that is limited land is limited raw material is limited labor is limited that resource will be better utilized better allocation of resources will be there so so i am telling you what are the benefits if one country x allows exports and imports from another country and another country also allows exports and imports from another country this type of scenario is named as a free trade scenario so the point is no doubt it has some cost also we will be watching that what are the costs what are the points to be taken care of supposedly this country india is not so much technology so much techno technologically sound as compared to this country so in this case if 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 india is not so much technologically sound as compared to this country it may happen that 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 the, the product which is which is better in this country will be imported here and that this industry this industry the industry indian industry for that particular sector maybe maybe in short run maybe closed because they are not doing efficient work they are not doing using the best technology and now they have to face with the global competition they have to face with the global global peers so what is the harm in that you know even if they were working inefficiently but but it may be possible that in india you know some folks may be doing efficient work they are using more better technology so they will survive ultimately it is a survival of the fittest so we are comparing the benefits and the cost of international trade no doubt there are some costs and there are some benefits but at the last i will say as a thumb rule it is better to have a international trade because ultimately there will be net benefit the person who has gained can share that benefit to the other persons because it may be possible that you are specialized in one particular product and you go on producing that product you will enjoy the rule of specialization the benefit of specialization as per as per maslow's need hierarchy theory so let's start with the journey that why what is the meaning of international trade first point what are the benefits for that and then we will be discussing with some case studies the first point is free international trade now firstly i have started with the concession with the discussion what i mean by free international trade free international trade among countries will increase overall economic welfare this is the thumb rule this is a thumb rule at last the, it will be increasing employment it will be you know creating the opportunities it will be creating the competition and ultimately the consumer will be beneficial cost per unit will come down and resources will be better utilized so hence we are surviving on earth on this earth planet you know and there will be a benefit of you know so many figures so many hence economic welfare will be there so first point is free international trade among countries will increase overall economic welfare second Point, countries can specialize in the production of export goods you know if i am specializing if my my hobby is to teach finance i will be teaching on finance 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 and i will be creating more better results as compared to if i am doing all the different products if i am doing if i am teaching this text as well as this as well as this as well as this so so i will i cannot enjoy the specialization benefits so a similar is the case with the countries if if that country is specializing in a particular product or in a particular sector then that country can put emphasis on that and hence specialization benefits economies of scale benefits can be there so second point is countries can specialize in the production of export goods and enjoy benefits of economies of scale economies of scale at the real case studies with china you know china is enjoying economies of scale when they are producing more units you know ultimately the synergy benefits the economies of scale is there economy welfare now what is the meaning of economic welfare this is testable so that's why i have given a separate point for that what is what i mean by economic welfare when i say economic welfare from the broader perspective point of view it will have greater product variety 
more variety will be there when when we allow international trade then that to free international trade it means i can buy from australia australian can buy from india i can buy from china china can buy from india there are no restrictions to that that will enjoy you know will be available with so many different types of products and more competition will be there and survival of the fittest and ultimately the consumer will be at beneficial and highest allocation of resources will be there so these are the some of the economic benefits which will be enjoyed in case of international trade so let us start with example number one just for just to substantiate my, my uh, point supposing there are five countries a b c d and e you know and a and a and b supposedly i am talking of a and b that b country b is technologically very sound if i assume that is country b is more technical technically sound more having a technological development as compared to country a now the point is if country a allows import from country b then it can ruin the domestic industry of country a because they are not so much techno technologically sound that industry is not technically sound for example in case of usa textile industry that is not technically sound so they have started importing from china so the point is the textile industry in usa will close down now whether it will be beneficial or not yes it will be beneficial because inefficient firms they will close down but it may be possible that textile industry in usa who are doing good efficient work they will perform better or the other other the, the other industry you know in 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 usa they will they will be doing better so it can be it can be in the in the both way so if if i say that there are five countries a b c d e and there are different scenarios which i have given to use just for understanding purpose scenario one can be that should country b allows its citizen to import certain goods from country a So suppose you are a prime minister, you are a minister of a country, and now you have to think it from country's point of view that whether my citizen should be allowed to import the goods from that country, and whether my country should be allowed to export the goods to that country. Now these can be different types of thought process which we can have. Now the point is, yes, if it is being allowed to import, or it is allowed to export, or it is allowed to export or import, as a case may be, if there is free trade, there is no restriction to that. Now there can be two possibilities: that there is there there is a free trade and there are no restrictions. One can go and come and say, okay, secondly, there are restrictions to that. there are restrictions to that yeah, that that this can be imported this component can be imported or we will be there is no import allowed or 100% custom duty will be charged like that like this so what will happen in that case so i have seen those possibilities as well but again i am telling you as a thumb rule at the end of the lecture today's lecture i will be telling you that international trade at the end will be helping us in economic welfare it means that there will be a case of net benefit so there can be two possibilities option a if trade flows are completely free and option b if there are some if there are some restrictions in trade flow if they are free then no problem and and in case of some restrictions are there then then what will happen restriction one can be not to import anything from that country it can be, you know there i have just given the examples or they are allowing to import with 100% levy of import duty because if we charge duty then it will become costly the cost will become double and you know and then then these are the restrictions so so the point is we have to discuss the benefits and the cost of international trade hope i have try i have conveyed my idea in regard to benefits of international trade and i am on to ban international trade now what are the costs involved in that so that is again a issue then we will be compare the benefits of international trade and cost of international trade the cost are primarily the loss of those in domestic industries especially less efficient producers it is very important because once we are purchasing from china there are so much domestic industries which have been closed down now unemployment has increased but they were they were inefficient you know the point is inefficiency they are not using best technology so cost can be this some domestic industries will get benefit from pre trade policies because if 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 the import is being allowed they will be purchasing that raw metal at x rupees from domestic country now we will be purchasing the raw metal from that country importing that raw metal from that country at x rupees minus something so that cost will be decrease you know for example in case of steel industries or in case of automobile industries earlier automobile industries in india they were purchasing steel from domestic 
steel manufacturer and the huge cost is there but if steel is being allowed to import from china from australia now indian domestic automobile industries they can purchase that raw material steel from australia from new zealand and they can in, they can decrease their cost and ultimately this benefit this reduction in cost that will be flowed that will be given to the customers and customer will be at the beneficial point so what is the fun in purchasing high cost of goods so the point is the point is we are comparing the benefits of international trade with the cost of international trade say fifth point some domestic industries will get benefit from pre free trade policies now the point is there is argument that what is to be done some argue that greater income inequality may be outcome as a free international trade it means rich will become more richer and poorer will become more poorer and there will be huge disparity between the economy but overall i will say overall but overall the economy will be there due to liberalization due to globalization there will be a huge benefit in the economy just see the impact of globalization this is impact of globalization that you know if if this economy moves you know there will be incre increased trade and greater you know competition economies of scale increased capital tax avoidance structural monopoly power of multinationals will be reduced so hence international trade is must because the net benefits are more as compared to the cost so the point is we have just given so that so that winners could compensate the losers and still be better off so i have given the case story of steel industry automobile industry earlier automobile industry domestic automobile manufacturers they were purchasing raw metal at a costly rate from the domestic um, steel manufacturers but now because import is being allowed they can purchase at a lower cost from the outsiders they, and hence cost per automobile can be reduced which will be delegated which will be passed on to the consumer so as 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 in the next case today i have just told you in, the, in in case of china you know china is doing a huge greater work nowadays in trade flows international trade flows even the exporting to uh, usa to other asian countries to so every country in this world and ultimately what the benefit is there if usa is purchasing your know, textile from china at a lower cost their cost will their cost will reduce and it will be passed to consumers and what will be the benefit to the china in china employment will generate you know and better utilization of resources will be there economic economies of scale will be there and hence i can say at a broader aspect economic welfare will be there so this is lecture number 2 this is bhupesh anand i have today told you something about learning outcome number b that is what are the benefits and what are the, what are the cost of international trade hope you have enjoyed it be happy be jolly be cheerful